Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar for incoming students who plan to begin studying in person at the University of Cincinnati this summer semester. And I say begin study this summer because due to the COVID pandemic, many of you have already been studying with us either fall and or spring semester online and are now going to be coming for the first time. Some of you on the line may be direct admits for this summer. In either event, there are things you need to be aware of in terms of your ability to come, making sure you've completed all of your pre-arrival steps and giving you instruction on what to expect upon arrival. So we are going to be talking about all of those issues this morning. Now, the first thing you got to understand is that this summer is different than most terms due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So the Department of Homeland Security normally requires international students to be enrolled full time in almost exclusively in person classes. But because of the pandemic, they have provided relief for schools who are not operating normally due to COVID-19 and the University of Cincinnati is one of thousands of institutions throughout the country who is not working uh, or operating under our normal procedures. We are primarily online offering hybrid courses where appropriate to meet the new DHS requirements. The most important thing for you to understand is if you are coming this summer with an I-20 that starts May 10th, you have to be coming to engage in a full-time program in the summer, and it cannot be entirely online. Now, full-time for undergraduate students means 12 credit hours. Full-time for graduate students means at least 10 credit hours, and you cannot enroll in only online classes upon arrival. You are allowed to take mostly online courses to reach your full-time enrollment threshold, but you have to be in at least one in-person or partially distance learning course. The course should not be coded in Catalyst as entirely online or mostly distance learning. It can be fully in-person or partial distance learning. That would count. Many programs will be able to offer at least one in person or partial distance learning course for summer arrivals, but not all programs can do that. You need to verify with your program before you come for the summer that you will have at least one in person course to register for and that you will be able to register full time. If both of those things are not true, you should not be coming in person for the summer. Now, you need to understand what the university's protocols are right now for quarantine, COVID-19 testing, and all of those things upon arrival so you can arrive in the proper time frame. The first thing is classes begin on May 10th, 2021. Um, uh, and that's for summer semester, not, not fall semester. Now, all students arriving from overseas must self-quarantine for seven to 10 days upon arrival. That means you have to arrive by April 28th to complete quarantine so you can be in in-person courses beginning May 10th. For those living in UC housing, accommodations will be provided for you for quarantine. Those residing off campus or on campus who arrive earlier than 428 can be accommodated, but you will need to make a reservation with university housing prior to your arrival. And they will be the ones who communicate all of your housing information to you, where you're gonna do your quarantine, and then where you're going to have your permanent accommodations. Those of you who are living off campus, you're going to quarantine in whatever arrangement you made for yourself, whether it's a hotel initially or uh, an apartment directly. If you do arrive early, you are going to pay an additional um, nightly fee. 
information about summer housing options is available on the UC Housing website, and they should be available to you now. Once you have arrived, all students, whether you're living on campus or not, have to take a COVID-19 test five to eight days following arrival. If you choose not to do that, then you will quarantine for a full 10 day period. Everybody needs to make sure that you have downloaded the UC COVID app on the link on your screen prior to arrival. That's how most students communicate with our health services and the information is shared about where you need to go for the testing, when you're cleared uh, to come to campus, make sure you have downloaded the UC COVID check app and you follow the instructions uh, upon arrival. Now, if you will be arriving to the US through air, regardless of the, the country that you're coming from, you must be able to show a negative COVID-19 test within three days of your scheduled flight or they will not let you be on the flight. So make sure that you've got those opportunities and you can produce that test result before you go to the airport to get on the plane. You also have to keep in mind that currently, due to the pandemic, there are travel restrictions in place for many countries. Right now, Brazil, China, Iran, South Africa, and most European countries are on a list that says you can't enter the U.S. if you've been in those countries for any part of the 14 days prior to arriving in the U.S. There is an exemption to this for those from the European countries and UK, Ireland. They will let you in, but if you are from Brazil, China, Iran, South Africa, you will not be able to come into the United States unless you have spent the prior 14 days in a country that is not on one of the travel restricted lists. So you need to keep that in mind if you're from one of those countries. You also have to have a valid visa to enter and some consulates and embassies are completely closed. Others are not operating at full capacity yet. Hopefully you've gotten your visa stamp by now. Uh, and so this won't be an issue, but if not, you have to make sure you're going to get your visa stamp in time to arrive by April 28th. If you can't, then you're going to have to start making arrangements to come fall semester, not summer. Now, if you can't arrive in time, you do have the option to take the courses online in the summer if you want. You can choose not to enroll at all in the summer if you want. But if you decide to come for the fall instead of the summer, you need to let us know that that's your plan. Right now you have an I-20 that says, we expect you to come by May 10th. If those plans change, email us at international.students at uc.edu and let us know so a new I-20 can be issued for you. You also need to be aware of insurance issues. So most international students end up with the university student health insurance policy. Classes begin on May 10th. The policy, once you've entered the US, will kick in as early as May 1st. But if you plan to arrive before May 1st, and you should because you have to be here by April 28th, you need to make sure that you have some sort of traveler's insurance that covers you in the case of an accident or illness until May 1st. It's your responsibility to make sure you have the appropriate insurance coverage in case something happens. Next, I wanna turn our discussion to what you need to do with our office and our pre-arrival checklist to ensure that we know you're coming and we have all the information we need to activate your legal record upon arrival in the United States. Everybody should know what our iBearCats global system is. You've used it to get your I-20 form and, and report certain things. Make sure that until you arrive and enroll, that you're using the limited iStart services link to log in. Once your visa has been issued, you need to make sure that you complete at least tabs one through five. 
Most of you are probably on at least tab three at the moment, but once your visa is issued, you will be able to complete at least through tab five. If you know where you will be staying upon arrival, even temporarily, you can complete tab six. You won't be able to complete tab seven until you enter the US. It's at that point that you get issued an I-94 card that you can download from the government system. What you have to remember is immediately upon arrival, once you get to your destination, get settled, get some sleep, the next thing you need to do is go to the I-94 card website and then return to our pre-arrival checklist and complete the remaining tabs seven through nine. So when you go to our iBearCats global system, you're gonna see two boxes, one for full client services, one for limited. Make sure you are clicking on the limited services link to access our pre-arrival checklist. Once you log in, you will see the nine different tabs. And again, most of you at this point should at least be on tab three for plan your arrival. But once you get your passport, once you get your visa, make sure you've completed at least through tab five. And again, once you know where you're gonna stay, you have a valid US address, complete tab six. And then once you enter the US, get your I-94 card and complete tab seven, eight, and nine. Each tab has instructions for you. Make sure you read those instructions and follow them carefully while you're completing the checklist. Now, a lot of incoming students have already been enrolled at the university fall and spring um, semester online, and some of those students have questions. One of the questions we get a lot from, from those students are, so I enrolled fall and spring um, online in my home country and I'm coming in person for the summer. How will that impact my ability to get engaged in optional and curricular practical training, especially for those of you who are in program, programs that have co-op um, and other work requirements? In order to engage in OPT or CPT, you must complete at least one academic year of study in the US. So if you arrive for the summer, complete that full time, enroll and complete the fall, you're gonna be eligible for things like CPT beginning spring semester 2022. Lots of students also have concerns about COVID-19. and What happens if you get sick? Are, are those kinds of expenses covered by the UC student health insurance policy? And the answer is yes, it is. Um, the policy obviously has, you know, deductibles and, and co-payments that are due. But beyond that, anything that happens to you for any accident or illness, including COVID, will be covered by your student health insurance policy. Now, it's important to remember that all guidance given today is subject to change. Our government, the SEVP, can make changes to rules. UC can make changes to things, and the state of Ohio uh, can make changes to things. We will keep the COVID-19 site up to date with changes. Make sure that you know how to access the FAQ for international students, and it will offer lots of question and answer opportunities for your circumstance. If you can't find the, an answer to the question that you have on the FAQ site, certainly make sure that you email us directly at international.students at uc.edu. So we look forward to the arrival uh, of all of our students this summer who are coming for the first time. We want to make sure that your transition is as easy and enjoyable as possible, given a pandemic. Um, but there are things you need to be aware of in terms of when you should arrive and what you should be completing um, before and after arrival. So we hope this session has helped you understand those things. We will at this point accept questions. If you would, send your questions through the chat function. And Sarah O'Connell, one of my staff members, will be um, 
you know, telling us what the question is, and we will try to answer those. Sarah, we just do we have any in the pipeline yet? Yeah, we just got two, which have been answered, but for the, the recorded presentation, I'll, I'll reiterate them. Okay. Um, so someone asked, can we quarantine elsewhere in the U.S. upon arrival and be at UC by the start of classes? So, yes, you are allowed to quarantine um, elsewhere and be at, at, at UC by the start of classes, but you also have to keep in mind that some cases or some places in the U.S. are considered high risk and quarantining in those high risk places may subject you to additional quarantine procedures. That's why it's important to download that COVID check app and make sure um, from them that you're gonna be able to quarantine there. And when you get here, there will be no further quarantine responsibilities for you. Thanks, Ron. And then our second question was, am I eligible to work part-time on campus immediately after my arrival? If you find an on-campus job, so F1 international students are allowed to work on campus 20 hours a week while school's in session, and you can do that immediately upon arrival in the U.S. if you're able to find a job. If you do find a job, you will need to use our iBearCats global system to submit an employment onboarding verification request so we can approve it, help you do your I-9 form, get you a U.S. Social Security card. But yes, you are allowed to begin work as soon as you enter the U.S. and you find a job on campus. Thank you. That is all that we had in the chat box. All right. Well, uh, we look forward to everybody's arrival. We will be posting this seminar on our website as well for people um, who couldn't attend or if you want to refresh your memory on some things. But again, we look forward to seeing you in a few weeks um, and everybody stay safe and, and we will see you soon. Thank you for joining us.